Apologies. Apologies. I was muted. All right. Well, we'll start again. Hold on. I'm just kidding. I don't give a shit. All right. Welcome to Sacrament Podcast. This is telling me it's it's episode 34. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got. That's what we're going to go with. So we make the, the best of it. Um, all right. So let's talk about our weeks in in Sacrament. Uh, Patreon update. We had our first Patreon hit right before the 4th of July, obviously. I think it was $146 or something like that. I have the numbers somewhere in a, a spreadsheet that I'm working to make sure that we're properly tracking everything. The Children of the Centaurin is going as planned. Um, working with volunteers is always hectic, always a pain in the ass. It will never change. That will never not be the case. Um, we've had one hiccup with getting just the card done. Our uh, first guy that was going to do all the cards for us actually had some life issues he had to go take care of, so we stepped away from the team. Our second guy has not responded. Uh, he's usually very responsive, but has not responded, so we pushed it on to our third guy. None of them are better than the other, just we had the, the third guy working on something completely different. We had him actually working on building the board so our programmers can start working on, on rendering assets on the board and whatnot. I have this reminder here, though I think it's supposed to be gone by now. Newsletters are active every Wednesday, every other Wednesday. Just go for every other Wednesday. Uh, this last Wednesday, I didn't want to release anything. I didn't have anything firm I could release. We will put out a press release about a... Um, we're going to start releasing books for the game, for stories that happen in, in the history of our game space. So look out for those. Uh, we've got one that... I believe Tawny has been working on, um, which is a series. It's a short story series. So <laughs> I messed up running again. Ah! All right. <clears throat> so let's talk about what we're here to talk about. And that is the IR30 review. I know this is supposed to be done last Friday. Half of you probably already know everything there is to know about this. I'm going to do it anyways because why the hell not? So the Techromancer, first and foremost, is one of our pet classes. We have five. The Techromancer is one of them. You might hear me say she. It's because, for whatever reason, I view the Techromancer as female. Every time that we've ever talked about the Techromancer, I just picture this badass female just tearing shit up. So um, she builds pets very, very, um, very into building the pets. It's not just your typical pet class. Again, within our game, we've we've altered the way that the pet class works. Uh, there's a lot more interactivity. Your pet's not just a, a dumb or over smart AI that might figure it out. It's actually the player involved with the pet, telling the pet what to do, how to do it, stuff like that. So, um, I'm not gonna bore you with all this stuff. You can read all that stuff. What I do wanna talk about though, is obtaining the pet. So the pet process. It's been a little bit since I read this, so I don't want to get it entirely wrong. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is if you're a techromancer, you're out in the world, you'll start out with your pet. And you'll you'll obtain some instructions through quests and, and, and whatnot. Um, and other ways you're going to be out in the world while you're out killing stuff. Uh, ground spawns, drops off mobs, a mixture of all kinds of things. That will open up a quest for you to start uh, kind of researching um, this this thing you picked up it might be a gear cog with some scribbled notes etched in on it or something uh, and the techromancer is going to understand what that is nobody else is really going to understand but the techromancer will understand what that is and it immediately will open up uh, a, a quest for the techromancer to go out and, and research and find more information about whatever this piece of information is so the techromancer will have plenty of, of uh, we haven't decided exactly, like maybe they'll go back to one of the capital cities and talk to the guild master for the Techromancers, and they'll guide the Techromancer to key locations. But the Techromancer will be drawn to key locations in one way or another. We're not going to put, you know, big circles on the map and, and point you to the exact direction. We want you to think a little bit, be a little bit more active in it. Uh, we want it to be less of a Zerg and more of an exploration meets intelligence meets, oh fuck, I figured it out kind of thing. 
Um, so the Techromancer will go out to other locations and learn. Uh, they'll, they'll find other components that will go with, and they'll they'll start building their own blueprint. Once they've got the blueprint, they will then actually build their first version, the Mach 1 version of a creature. Let's say it's let's say it's a rat, just for, for shit's sake. So they'll build their pet rat Mach 1. And they'll go out and they'll fight, and during the fight, the, the pet rat will fall apart. This is the first design. It's not going to be perfect. So the Tacromancer, being in that fight, will now be able to to scribble down some notes and the player will go back and build a Mach 2 version. Some minor enhancements from what they saw from the short time that pet was active. Uh, then they'll go out and fight again. And at that point, the pet will last a little bit longer throughout the fight uh, or series of fights, depending on, on whether or not you're grouped and, and how long it takes, until the pet again breaks down. And this will happen a few times until the Tacromancer has built a surefire, kind of a, a master clockwork style pet uh, blueprint with all of these defined um, reasons as to why they want to enhance certain areas and structurally sound and, and make it more offensive or defensive or whatever the case may be. And then the Tacromancer goes and, and builds the final version of the pet. And now the Tacromancer can summon that pet at any point in time. A uh, similar setup will be utilized in enhancing the Techromancer's bond with that pet, which increases your and the pet's efficiency with that pet out. Um, so you're going to want to level uh, your pets with you individually, each each pet. And this is that's true for, for all the classes. You can keep it bare bones and only use it when you ever want to use it or when, when you ever need to use it, and that's fine. It's not a necessity for you to go out and, and bond build bond with all of your pets but it's it's a key functionality of the pet class so that they're always involved in their pet so that it's not just get a pet forget you got the pet use it whenever the hell you know the, the one in a hundred situation where you'd actually use it and then nothing uh, we wanted it to have a lot more flavor than just that all right so now the auction house. So I've I've talked about the auction house before in Sacrament. Uh, we've had a conversation about it. Um, myself, check. We had people talking about it in in chat about how auction houses in the games are either really restrictive um, or they're too massive. Um, and there's I mean there's give and take on all of that, right? It's it's simply life. So with our auction house, we actually have a way for players to build up to certain levels of functionality. So as you enter the world for the first time, based on the race you choose, you're going to enter in one of the three starting cities. That starting city, you will have core functionality with the, the auction house in that, that city, but not the other two. You'll have to work for that one. You can build your your functionality up and up and this will allow you to post more items will reduce any taxes on items will allow you to view it from tier 11 and tier 16 auction houses so it'll, it'll increase functionality in, in a few different ways so long as you build up your faction and at max faction you'll have everything you can possibly have yes you can hurt your faction um i don't know that you're going to be able to hurt it at launch but when we launch our, our first expansion, there will be, there will be a, a really tough rope that you're going to have to play with depending on, on what side of the story you want to be on. So there, there will be a way to hurt that faction a little bit, but it's not going to destroy you. You're not going to become hated or anything crazy. You can always rebuild the faction if you need to. So your tier one, you're a vermi. You start out in, in the southwest. Uh, you want to build the other two cities. Very simple. Just go there, build it up. It'll take a little bit more time because you're starting at near nothing, um, which is not the same thing as, as neutral. Uh, and you're going to have to cover that ground, but it's beneficial to do so. All right. So you played through the game for quite some time. So you're six months in. Uh, you finally broke tier 11. You're three months in and finally broke tier 11. We're going to assume nobody here sucks, okay? <laughs> You're three months in, you broke tier 11, and now you want to go utilize that auction house because that auction house has a few different benefits than, than the first three. So the first three, you can't, they, they're never going to see each other. 
they'll never see each other working with the first three you're isolated to that auction house independent of itself okay tier 11 is a little different so let's say you've got max faction at all three of the tier ones and then tier 11 you finally build up max faction now at tier 11 you can view all four auction houses okay you can purchase from all four auction houses at this point the only thing is you can only post when you post an item to a tier 11 auction house every individual item you can only have that item also post to one of those tier one auction houses it can't go to all three you can have different items and all three of those items going to different auction houses different tier one auction houses but the individual item can only post it at tier 11 and one of the tier one auction houses so you get a little bit more more functionality out of it uh murder, murdering a, a citizen will actually not affect your faction with this this alliance at all um it's it's broken up the auction house the traders guild is completely separate from the guards or or normal citizenry unless you murder a banker it's a whole nother freaking story so you're at tier 11 you finally open up the auction house you can view all of them at once which is great for you uh you can monitor and see what items are selling at better rates at different auction houses and you can shift them from where you're at and it's excellent for you you love it but you want a little bit more you want to be able to post one item to all auction houses well you're gonna have to need to break into tier 16 uh which is subscription content okay let's be straight up on this and this is something we're gonna cover this coming up friday because this monday the information release covers the payment model system that we're utilizing so you go into tier tier 16. now your tier one or your tier ones and your tier 11 auction house are all max faction you're all blues with these bad boys or whites or whatever color we're going with at this point now from the tier 16 auction house you can not only view all other auction houses but any item you post automatically pushes to every auction house so now you've got a type of global auction house and i say type of because when that first expansion comes out you're going to realize it's not global at all it's just continental uh i don't want to call it a continental auction house because players aren't aren't going to understand what the fuck that means yet so we're just going with the term global because everybody understands global and they're just going to have to adapt to it when when the expansion comes out <laughs> don't you worry zags that's roughly how the auction houses work now a couple things to note well really major thing to note is in order for for two different auction houses to see each other they both have to be max faction that's a part of the that allows you and the the guild the the merchants alliance or no what is it the the trading guild arm no arm is something else no that is a part of arm okay you'll learn about arm soon uh that allows the members of arm to trust you enough and feel close enough that they'll you know send messages and ship goods uh at, at very low cost low value um for you without any additional work a tier one you haven't really worked that up yet you're not really building any rapport on, on massive levels you're building a local rapport tier 11 the, the entire capital city is a different scenario the tier one capital cities are are, are really citizen run cities uh demo, democracies and and whatever else uh one of them is a kingdom um so they they're run by the people the tier 11 auction house is a little little mix it's it's governance is built of citizenry and militants and it's it's kind of dual dual run and then your tier 16 is it's really the capital city is more of a advanced military stronghold uh trying to trying to get in there and you'll you'll discover all that as you run through the story with the auction house system will be what we're calling crafter creator boards and this is just a place where you can you can post lfws uh, for those of you who have been around MMOs for a while, you know what an LFW is. For those of you who don't, LFW is just a crafter's way of saying looking for work or somebody looking for a crafter um, instead of LF group. Uh, this will allow people to post, you know, I'm looking for a house with, with four stories and, and this and that and then post it to the board and then 
the carpenters in the, in the local area be able to, to look at that and say, all right, I'm a carpenter, I want carpenter related stuff only, pull it up, and they can pick out of there and, and contact you and reach out with you and, and then you can go back and cancel that. Or the other way around, carpenters can put, you know, I can build up to this many rooms and this many floors and all this stuff, uh, and then people can reach out to them, so. When it comes to crafting, we wanted it to be, there's not really a set system I think Final Fantasy XIV might have implemented something similar similar to this, um, but for crafting, it always winds up happening in a chat channel or, or in, in zone chat or something like that. And we wanted to put some place where you could actually go to uh, an isolated board and people could walk up to specifically with the intent to to find you or for you to find them, whatever the case may be. Uh, so we think we think it'll benefit immensely. The only things, when it comes to that, the only thing we're not sure on is if we're going to let that be global, if it should be local, uh, what the case may be. There's there's pros and cons to both. If it's global and you're looking for tier, you know, tier 1 or tier 16 crafters and you're looking from the tier 16 area specifically for individuals that are in those tier 16 areas, um, getting a whole bunch of individuals that are on tier 1 boards or, or tier 7 crafters, uh, that said, that said, you know, a click. You sort the the people you want to see, and maybe we have a, a button that you can click for local posts only. So there's there's all kinds of things we can do with that. That's that's the kind of thing where you just test it out and see what works better, what flows better, what what is less restrictive and less of a hindrance on people. So that's where we're going at with that. And then trading, this is really kind of a side note only because there have been MMOs that have come out over the last couple of years that don't have trading in game. Yes, you will be able to trade with players normally. Uh, click on the player, hit trade or slash trade target or uh, right click trade, whatever the case may be um, and open up a freaking trade. So it'll be very simple, very you know original MMO-esque. It's not really there doesn't need to be an evolution of the trading system. That's as simple, it it's, needs to stay simple so that it's easy to use. It's a very simple process, so. Um, I think that's it for the IR review. Let's go back here real quick. Yep, so that's the information release. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're looking at, Zags. He says maybe have some sort of drop down button to post in local or global continental and an ability to sort where you want to search if you're buying. That's that's basically how it'll work. The more power you give players, the more they can do. So it's, it's what it comes down to. Everything else is just script running, honestly, in the background. So there's no reason why it can't be applied. All right, <clears throat> so we're on to the point where some of you may want to leave. I know this is going a little fast, I'm actually expecting somebody to show up. Uh, that and 4th of, 4th of July just happened. Uh, I don't do well with 4th of July at all. Uh, it's why we, well, it's, it's one of the reasons we didn't do podcasts on Friday. I was half just going to go with it anyways. Um, since some of our, our viewers aren't even from the States. But uh, anxiety and, and, and yeah, no. So I spent 4th of July in a movie theater ignoring the noise. So this, this is, is a conversation I was having with, with Crave. You guys know Crave. He's one of the co-founders, kind of an asshole like me. So he can't be here today because they actually lost power about half an hour ago from a storm. So sucks. We were, we were talking about some, some elements of the card game. Yeah, basically. And one of the things he wanted to throw into the card game, and I threw it the fuck out the window, was to add a resource uh, to the usage of cards. And I gave him this. Because no. Um, resource management was something that was created in the MMO world as a way to restrict kind of to the D&D sake where you can only cast an ability per day or, or set amount of, of abilities per day. Resources were implemented to provide that same uh, restriction 
on a much different level because the MMO had to be a little faster pace. And now the MMO should be quite a bit faster pace as opposed to just a little, right? Like we don't want lightning fast MMOs. We don't need, you know, hack and slash them, which would be a good game if, if somebody built it uh, and actually built it correctly. Uh, that, that wouldn't be a bad MMO. It's not the MMO we're going for, but at the same time, I'm not a fan, and I'm not going to say shit about Magic the Gathering, because Magic the Gathering has a completely different card layout and the resources necessary for what they do. Added to our card game, you fuck our entire game up. It's not fucking happening. So, resource management in our card game or in MMOs, and this is specifically what I'm talking about, has become bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's become this horrendous excuse for why you can't balance anything. It drives me insane. Typically in an, in an MMO now, what you see is, is kind of a resource starvation. If you can't build an in-depth combat system, I feel, you fall back to resource management as a gimmick. And that's all it is, it's a gimmick. That's all it was for, for everything. In D&D, it's, it's a method of balance. In an MMO, it's never been a method of balance, ever. In D&D, &E, you, can't, you can't bypass by building up enough abilities or enough days and saving them or some crap like that to balance the, the restriction on daily casts. In an MMO, all you have to do is build your magic pool up, up bigger and bigger and bigger until it, it doesn't matter anymore. Or you get a character who we, we used to call them mono batteries, who could transfer their resource to yours so you can continue to cast. <laughs> so instead, and and I'll tell you honestly, and, and I, I told this to Crave, our game wouldn't even have resources. I shit you not, from the beginning, I would have pitched them no resources. No, no primary resource. Uh, momentum's different because that's a whole nother rule set. Um, and we're not planning on people to be able to build more momentum. You simply have the momentum to use an ability and then you have to rebuild the momentum. So it's, it's a lot different. Uh, but the primary resource, if it were up to me from the very beginning, if, if I didn't know that the general population, even, even the people we're, we're pitching this game to, would not accept it, we wouldn't have primary resource. You would simply just cast motherfucking abilities. Because you've been doing this for quite some time. I mean, yeah, there's some limitation, but at the same time, I, I can go to the store and, and buy a whole bunch of arrows and shoot arrows for days and days and days. There's, uh, under the, the idea that I've planned ahead, I've got a near unlimited resource of arrows. Um, when it comes to fighting, every competitive fight I've ever been in, you train for more endurance than you're going to need in the match. I know if you overdo it, boxing, MMA, stuff like that, you get really exhausted, really quick. And a lot of that comes down to overtraining at the same time. When it comes to the resource of magic, this isn't as draining, User entered your channel. as restrictive. Channel switch. I forgot to change that. As restrictive as your physical prowess and endurance. On top of that, we're in a fantasy world. We got a lot more capability than a normal human being. So if I can go 12 rounds, probably 16 rounds, and I'm not, I'm just training for a specific fight. I'm not even training every day since I was able to come of age up until and beyond now, then I should be able to last. Let's say I trained every single day, every single day since I was 16 on until now. If I can't go 16 rounds, we got a serious issue. I should be able to go about 30 or 40 rounds. It's all conditioning exercise. And that's how I, how I view magic in an MMO world, in a, in a, a lot of fantasy settings. Uh, the usage of, of magic or elements or anything like that is, is a conditioning ordeal. You don't, you don't stop being able to use them just because now you're at war. You, 
for me the resources become a way to to create imbalance to, to absolutely create imbalance ESO is a perfect example right now ESO if you're playing it you know it's horribly unbalanced it I don't think it's ever been balanced when it comes to balance they're always trying to play with the cost of the or they're trying to fix the numbers based on the cost of the ability that should never be a part of balance that should never be considered as a part of the balance like a something we've done because we've got the resource is we've and I've, I've shared this with people before we've already talked about this uh we've got the uh cool down reduction timers right Everything is a soft cooldown. There's no hard cooldowns. As long as you've got the resource, you can cast again. You've got some penalties, but you can cast again. The only reason we've got that is because we don't want players going in and just spamming one ability. Do we really care if a player spams one ability? Honestly, no. I don't give a fuck. If a player wants to see the same damn ability played over and over again, I'm just as likely to give it to them. The problem is players won't accept that. And my team won't accept that. So I'm the only one that sits in that boat. I don't think I'm wrong just because I'm the only one on my team sitting in that boat. And and we're talking even when Wicked was on the team, he didn't even agree with me on, on this particular point, which is fine. I don't need to be agreed with to be right. I'm just, just saying. Um, but I absolutely feel resource management has become absolute bullshit. If you're... We build a raid game. Okay, let's, let's be straight up about this shit. We've built a raid game for players to enjoy. We bounce everything based on the raid scenario and then let it come down. That's how we've gone about the entire balance and scales on this, on this entire endeavor. Everything starts with the hardest content possible. If we were going to build a raid game, and our raids right now, we're shooting for between 15 and 25 minute fights, okay? Heavy mechanic driven fights to the point where you can't zerg past them. You can't just DPS power through them. There are mechanics you simply cannot ignore because the raid sets those boundaries the players don't. If we built our game true to that, we either have to have a very minor amount of resource being used or an incredible amount of regeneration possible, which is what we've done, or no resource at all. Otherwise, how the fuck do you last 15 minutes, 30 minutes in a fight? I mean, some of these guilds, first time in, they're gonna take 20, 30, 40 minutes per boss until they actually learn it. They're going to sit there and, and heal through as they're learning and, and certain phases will reset because they're failing to, to compete with the raid mechanics, for us to create that and also create a starvation resource game, we've absolutely said fuck you to the raiders. We don't understand how to build a game if, if that was the case. You should not be here if that was something we were doing. If you ever see a game doing that, walk the hell away. Just don't even, if Elder Scrolls came out with a raid scenario, I mean, most people have already walked away anyway, but anybody who's anybody should be walking the hell away because their game is built on starvation mechanics. Their resource starvation is insane. That's how they built their game, whatever the case may be. Do what you do, ESO. You're, you're gonna continue to go down your path. I don't care. I'm just saying, you can't build a long-term game with heavy resource and the value of minimum resource really doesn't exist. I mean, other than giving support a job during during a long fight. Honestly, that's that's the only true value of the resource is to give support roles some functionality, some more functionality in a long fight because regeneration is huge, right? Primary resource regeneration is absolutely huge. If you can get primary resource rolling or regeneration rolling as a support class as your raid and you can sustain, then you've got a solid raid. At that point, all you need is the tank that can take the hits and the healer that can heal for all damage taken. And then your DPS needs to be 
at a minimum level to 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 compete with with mechanics and then your cc have to be able to manage whatever the hell comes in you got those five things at the most fundamental you've got a raid group it's that simple so we gave primary resource i'll probably get rid of it over over the duration of the game maybe maybe not i don't know i don't know i don't Personally, as a gamer, I don't like when somebody releases a mechanic at launch and then removes it um, just to remove it, so I probably will do that. Anyway, I know I'm not as passionate as I usually am. It's this just 4th of July shit. I apologize. Next week should be much better. I've actually been building a sound booth so I can get my mind off of this shit. Uh, they won't let me uh, utilize uh, medicinal marijuana yet, so... <laughs> I would love to have some fucking sativa in my damn system right now. Y'all motherfuckers would see laying them from 10 fucking years ago. So that's a whole nother beast. Whole nother beast. A little less, a little less angry, aggressive. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions? If so, ask away. While, while I'm waiting on anybody to type anything out, Oh, yeah, it was some other notes I hadn't even brought up. Just a heads up for those of you that have any friends or any talents, um, creature modelers. Uh, we lost our digital graphic designer. We would love to have another graphic designer. We don't have much work. We've just got some work for them. Um, what else we got? Programmers. Always need programmers. Uh, world builders, man, if you're a world builder, please get your ass on over here. I don't know what's going on with my two world builders, but myself and the CTO are going to have to go to their house and, and put them in a, in a headlock. I can only write it off as summertime and volunteer status. As I said, volunteers are pain in the ass to work with, um, which is why we we went with the the card game why it took so long to build the card game because we wanted it to be a standalone product that we could also generate funds off of. So the sooner we can get that going, the sooner we can we can push that out, the more likelihood we have of becoming self-funded and not being no, not needing to rely on on anything but that revenue essentially. So I think it's it. Zags has always got memes and jokes and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, this studio will actually not be for this game. Well, I'm actually... Uh, man, I'm always up in arms about shit like that. Up in arms. Up in the air about shit like that. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, before PTSD hit, I actually had a music licensing and production company. I did all the vocal work, uh, arrangement, writing the lyrics, songwriting, um, all of the vocal work itself. It's just what I did. And we were fairly successful. Um, this will probably just be kind of a side project to help me pull in some, some revenue outside of Sacrament uh, that I can throw into Sacrament. The more revenue I can throw a sacrament would be freaking awesome. So, all right. So, thank you for coming. Uh, if you want to check out more, remember our Patreon is live. Everything I'm talking about is down down below in the links. Uh, Facebook and Twitter pages are active. Check out Facebook, like the page, share the posts if if, if you would please. <laughs> uh, Twitter, follow us on Twitter. That's Sacrament Game. Sacrament Reddit page is active, though we don't really touch it much. Uh, if I had somebody working that, I would have them put all of our PRs for the, the IRs up there. Um, the website and forum links are down below. On the front page of the website, you'll notice this is the Sacrament newsletter that is active. It is going out to people. I'm able to see that People are opening the thing. So uh, check that out. Uh, we we post a newsletter every other week unless we have something else other than the IR to talk about. Uh, and then 
the weeks in between the IR is when I post other public relations stuff. All the sharing. So sign up for the newsletter if you want up-to-date information. Uh, that is the most up-to-date way, maybe? I don't know. Well, Facebook. Facebook and Twitter are the most up-to-date. Newsletter comes out Wednesday. IR comes out on Monday. Um, although, the, the newsletter will be things other than IR related that aren't released on Monday through Hootsuite. Those will, will come out through the IR. So the forum has a sign up. We are working on adapting right now the, the forums. Uh, what we're gonna do is create different categories for people to be in. And anybody that's contributed the amount for the forums will have access to post wherever the hell they want on the forums, except for the dev section. That's not happening. Uh, not, until, not until much, much. I don't think the dev section will ever open up. A separate dev section may open up, but Ours is exclusively ours. You don't want to see the shit we put in there. You really don't. Um, the volunteer form is also listed below. If you've got any talents, uh, anything ranging from accounting to programming, doesn't matter what it is. If you've got a talent we can use in business, by all means, let me know. Um, let me know how many hours a week. If you can even give me an hour, I would love to, to help you build up your resume. So, And then the Sacrament Roundup, they posted today. It's every other Friday, this Friday, not next, next one after that. Uh, they give a brief insight on what's going on uh, over the, the previous two week period. So usually they have something about me on there, but I didn't do a podcast last week, so they couldn't put anything on me. Ha ha! And that's it. I'm over here reading from notes, looking away from you guys. I apologize. Oh, I, someone needs to get on the VA, tell them stop being chicken shits, making fake weed and shit. Fuckers. All right. I know some of you probably anti-marijuana and I'm over here talking about it and shit. I don't give a damn. Anyways, love y'all and have a great time. Oh, crap. Um. No comment. <laughs>